you've roasted a beautiful golden brown turkey. Congratulations, now you need to carve it. It's not as difficult as it might seem. You just need a sharp knife and a steady workstation. And in our case, a catering pro like Matt Sapari of Riviera Events and Catering in Brandon. And Matt has very kindly agreed to walk us through the process and he even brought along a turkey that would have your stomach growling if there were such a thing as smell-o-vision. Well, since there isn't, I'm just gonna take one for the team. So, you're welcome. Thank you, Matt, for coming in. Thank you for having me today. But seriously, I'm glad smell vision isn't a thing because everyone's stomachs would be growling right now. That's true. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. That is true. Before we get started, you actually are using rosemary. Yes, I use fresh rosemary along with garlic, salt, and pepper, and cumin when I roast it. So I slow roast it because I don't like to high heat. It'll dry out the meat. Okay. So you keep it slow and steady, and it's all rubbed with extra virgin olive oil. To add and that flavor. And will give it the flavor and the extra crispy skin. So when you say slow roast, I mean, how long does it take to roast? I usually do 325 for four to four and a half hours, depending on the size of the bird. Like in this case, this only took three hours and 15 minutes. And how do you know when it's ready and it's done being roasted? Uh, a lot of times, I mean, if you have a digital thermometer, once you stab it in the breast and you stab it in the thigh and you get a temp, once you reach the, the right uh, temperature, which is between 155 to 165, then it's to fully go. done. Yep. All right, so carving, is this like an art? How do I do this? Carving a turkey, it is art. It's art with, with anything that you're carving in the cooking business, whether it's a pork loin or if it's a turkey. So we always start by, once you take it out of the oven, it is essential that you leave it sit for at least 15 minutes so it rests. And a lot of people say, what does it mean that it has to rest? When the meat comes out of the oven, all the juices are flowing in there. As soon as you cut into it, all the juices will pour out and the meat becomes dry and shriveled. Okay. If you let it sit, it, absor it keeps the moisture in. So afterwards, when you cut it, it's still moist. Okay. Yeah. Good tip. Should we start? Let's start. I'm all excited right. to learn. First thing I've learned years ago uh, to do is you want to get the leg off. So we have the whole leg here. I'll set that here for you. Get the other side. And you just take it off and set it aside? Yep. Uh, some people like to shred it and put it on a tray. I like to keep it in pe the whole piece. That way it's easier for some people at the dinner table say, I only like the dark meat. You and know? it's all separated for you. It's already separated for you. Then you get to the breast. A lot of times we struggle with how to carve it, where to start. One easy way is you get the sharpest knife that you can find. Some people use a electric knife. I, my whole life I've used regular knives, so I'm used to that. I don't like to work with electric knives. So you just That's go cutting to the really base easy too. because it's very tender and yeah. I have a sharp knife. And then you go to the center bone and you kind of cut down and there you have it, the whole piece. That was super easy. Yep. Then what do you do when you normally set it down? Once you get it down there, you just take the knife and see. And cut it into pieces? Just like butter. Yep. Wow. It's amazing what a really sharp knife can do too and how much easier that can yes. make it. Yes, that is very essential to use a sharp knife as long as you're very careful with it. Look how pretty that looks. Yep. And like perfect slices. There you have it, just like that. So if I wanted to shred it though, that's what I'm going you can. for. Yes. Would I just kind of be pulling it apart? Yes. And it'll come apart so easily. You just go like that and look, it just falls apart for you. So. Okay. Mmm. That's really good. And then with the other side, we just do the same. You follow the center bone and you go down and then it kind of when it's when it's cooked to tenderness you see how it it really comes off the bone you don't have to fight mm -hmm. to get the meat off the bone right just slides right off yeah and then you can do the same thing yep and the rest um you can a lot of a lot of dishes you can make out of it number one is going to be a lot of people like to make turkey soup mm -hmm. and the left the rest the easier let's say if you if you cook it 20 pound turkey and you only use half of it and to store the other half you take the turkey without cutting it just like that you put it into uh, foil you wrap it in foil 
you keep it from crystallizing in the freezer, mm -hmm. and then you put it in a Ziploc bag, and you put it in the, in the freezer, and it'll last six months. Wow, that's a long time. So if I'm getting ready for a family gathering and I'm gonna have turkey and I, I get done doing this, do I wanna cut it all up right away or should I leave half of it on the bone if it's maybe not a lot of people there? I would cut half and because as you see, to, to carve out the rest of it, it's not gonna take very long. Yeah. yeah. What are some other things that you've tried cooking it with to add flavor? Um, with the turkey, it's, it's a signature item where you can't really doctor it up too much. I mean, I've done different seasonings with it, but as far as getting, you know, a different flavor to it, the turkey flavor is a signature flavor. Okay. No. I'm just eating here this whole time. Yep. No problem. This is so good. Okay. You mentioned um, leftovers. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that if you put, say you didn't want to use this part of the breast, you can put it in the freezer for six months, it'll stay good. What about leftovers that you're going to use like the remainder of the week? Can you put those in the fridge for how long? Uh, in the fridge, sometimes people say three to four days. My recommendation is no longer than 48 hours. Okay. And the reason for that is turkey tends to taste delicious the first day you make it, but then on the second and third day, it kind of wears off that whole aroma and flavor to it so you have to use it up as fast as you can a lot of a lot of times in our household we we do a lot of you know we chop it up and make it into a turkey salad or or a sandwich or, turkey salad yeah or a sal or a sandwich no it's a salad like mm -hmm. you make a regular yeah. nice salad and then you just take that and put it over it and with a little bit of raspberry vinaigrette dressing so what are you using your turkey for on thanksgiving this one well no this one's mine <laughs> but are you going to make yours in a turkey soup or anything? Uh, yes, actually, I'm going to be with friends and uh, our families are getting together. And so everybody's making something that we're going to have turkey, ham. Well, thank you so much for coming in and teaching us how yes. to do this. I think everyone is now prepared. I didn't realize it was that easy. So glad we had a pro to show us how it's done. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you.